The Supreme Court is expected to rule on two major voting rights challenges in Arizona any day now. One issue at hand is ballot harvesting. That is when someone collects a ballot to deliver it to a drop-off site for them. In Arizona, only certain people, like family members and caregivers, are permitted to do that. An appeals court ruled the so-called ballot harvesting restrictions were driven by discriminatory intent. Another challenge involves discarding ballots cast in the wrong precinct on Election Day. Arizona does not count those ballots. Lawmakers for the Arizona laws argue they are important for election security. But those against them say they violate the Voting Rights Act and disproportionately harm minority groups. For more, I want to bring in Aziz Haq. He is a law professor at the University of Chicago. Aziz, welcome. It's great to have you with us. So how do you expect the Supreme Court to rule on these two Arizona cases? The Supreme Court has been generally uh, welcoming of uh, states' concerns about voter fraud and has tended to uphold state laws that uh, impose either civil constraints or criminal penalties uh, in uh, the name of uh, protecting the integrity of the ballot, the court sees it. So I, I would expect the court to rule that the Voting Rights Act is not uh, violated by either of the two provisions that you just mentioned. Okay. And groups that illegally participate in ballot harvesting in Arizona are subject to harsh penalties. Are those penalties in line with other states? That's right. So in Arizona, uh, uh, it, uh, uh, an entity or a person that collects a ballot uh, uh, outside of uh, the immediate family and a couple of other exceptions can be penalized by a, uh, a, a spell in prison of up to two years or a fine of up to $150,000. Uh, this, is, this is higher than uh, is, uh, or, or these penalties are higher. Uh, than in, in many states. And uh, if the court upholds the Arizona uh, rule, I, I think we can expect to see uh, other states, particularly uh, where you have Republican-controlled legislatures and Republican governors, uh, adopting something like the Arizona rule. So no matter how uncommon it is today, uh, once the Supreme Court has ruled on this, uh, and as I said, it's likely to uphold it, uh, we're likely to see this kind of uh, uh, restraint uh, and criminal penalty imposed uh, in many other jurisdictions. And is there evidence of widespread ballot harvesting or out of precinct voting? Um, and has it been shown to be detrimental to election security in Arizona? Well, in, in many states, if you vote outside of your precinct uh, or if you turn up to uh, a precinct that's not yours, what will happen is that you're given a provisional ballot to cast. That's what happens, for example, where I live in uh, Chicago. Uh, and uh, that ballot may uh, be counted uh, if uh, your address and the like check out after the election. So. Um, out-of-precinct voting doesn't necessarily present uh, a risk to the integrity of the election. Uh, the same is true of what's called ballot harvesting. There are many civic groups, both on the right and the left, that encourage uh, individuals to get out the vote, uh, help them uh, get the get to the polls, and help the or help them mail in uh, ballots. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with those activities. Uh, the concern is uh, that I think is animating the Arizona law is that groups will use those legitimate activities as a cover for fraudulent behavior. There is, to mm -hmm. my knowledge, no evidence of such fraudulent behavior occurring at a level that could affect the outcome in any local, state, or federal election. So while there is lots of ballot harvesting, there's no evidence that the ballot harvesting leads to fraudulent activities. Yes, it's very interesting. There seems to be a lot of concern about potentially fraudulent behavior uh, that hasn't happened yet, um, you know, in a lot of states. It's sort of interesting. Um, so what will the Supreme Court rulings tell us about the importance of the Voting Rights Act across the nation? The case that the Supreme Court uh, will decide on Thursday 
concerns something called Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. And in particular, it concerns a theory of Section 2 under which individuals can bring suit challenging uh, what's called vote denial. This is the idea that you've been absolutely denied access to uh, the ballot box. Uh, vote denial claims are actually a relatively new thing. Uh, they've only been brought for about the last decade under Section 2. And this is the first time that the court uh, has had a chance to speak uh, to vote denial claims under the Voting Rights Act. Uh, what's really important uh, in Thursday's uh, opinion is whether the court shuts down completely the theory that the Voting Rights Act can be used to bring uh, a vote denial claim or whether it leaves the door open to some subset of such claims in the future. I think that's the thing that I will be looking at above and beyond what happens uh, in particular with respect to the two Arizona laws. Professor Aziz Huck of the University of Chicago, thank you so much for your insight. We appreciate it. Thank you.